started being a sculptor, in all honesty, by doing some small clay images for the kill. And this was an undergraduate school. Um, I was um, playing around with, I was involved in some ceramic classes and um, my prof professor said, why doesn't someone make a kill god? So I manufactured some small kill gods. Um, he then suggested to me that I might want to enlarge them, which I did. I was exposed to my, um, the love of my life, the little villain dwarf Venus, or as you have informed me, it's now called the woman of villain dwarf. That particular piece seemed to have made a major impact on, on myself as far as uh, being a sculptor. The piece is, is approximately um, five inches in height. It was done um, sometime 20 to 16 BC. It was a small fertility goddess, she was very voluptuous. You have the head with a bead work around the top, ton uh, body uh, with her, the hand sitting on the belly. She's uh, very very abstract, very minimal, uh, but she is, uh, when I s encountered the piece um, in the text, it was like, uh, perhaps it's been a love affair for 40 years, uh, 40 plus years. Uh, it just, it spoke to me. You know? Yeah, so she's a fertility goddess. She's a fertility goddess. And so your work carries these? Carries the same, the essence of that. The pieces are basically uh, a, a type of palm nut. They also refer to them as ivory palm. Fun pieces that um, I find to be cl most closely akin to the uh, Venus or the villain dwarf. When you remove the outer surface, basically this is what you're looking at. This is one that I'm currently that I started on, I haven't gotten very far with it, but I still have, have to um, do some finish work on it. The one problem that I've run across is that where the palm is, there's a sprout that you find inside of them, like right here. And this sprout will be what you see at the top here. Now some of these pieces, um, I can envision doing larger pieces in stone. I'm looking at um, maybe taking this image or something very similar to it and uh, transposing it into uh, a piece of marble. I'm basically using a rotary tool of some sort. Uh, right now I'm just using a Dremel tool. In doing these though, I found that bits that I had purchased worked well on the marble and, which is something I would have never have used. I found them to be highly useful on the last piece that I did in marble. This is uh, a piece that is, I think, not just dealing with uh, movement and the torso, but I wanted to, to, uh, to get the entire figure in. I wanted to utilize the perimeters of the stone, and it was basically a, um, a, a triangle. Just looking at uh, the facial, I was more or less looking for a, a nondescript female form. So I think of her as, as almost an earth mother uh, tight piece. To get the negative space which goes all the way from the front to the underside, uh, I first started out with a drill and then I began using um, a Dremel like tool to literally grind the areas out and then using some hand rasp. So you really just have to be able to see the piece in your mind to make these complicated overlapping of forms over top of forms? 
yes, it, it's there. You just have to pull that, that, that imagery out. And again, you know, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Well, I think it works in this piece. This, this tension in the, in the body, all the way from the hands through the shoulders, and this leaning forward where it's carried through in the face, makes it all come together. This is a, a piece of uh, alabaster. I really like the medium, especially in the, in the pink. I, th I, I just think that this is just really a, a pretty stone. This particular piece had um, almost a, a, an angle that came in at the front. So when I was looking at it, I wanted to incorporate my image with, within the confines of the material. I could see almost a, a running figure or a dance or figure that was dancing with the uh, one leg being on the ground, the other leg coming out. And so this, this is kind of where the, the piece came from. It's, it's almost animal-like as well, but I really like the, the horizontal lines in this. It sort of works with the, the movement that's, that's occurring in the figure. This vertical piece is, um, this, I worked on this for um, a year and a half, two years, on, a, on an on again, off again basis. It wasn't continuous work. I like the piece. It's, uh, I, I would say it's, it's probably one of my favorites. Marble takes a little longer to pull the piece out. Of. At a certain point though, once you begin to work on it, you start to see the piece coming out of it. And that is when you start to get excited. Anytime in the, in the figure, if there's a movement, there's a counter move. If, unless you are forcing the pose on a natural pose, the right shoulder goes up, the left hip goes up. It counterbalances itself. What's happening over here, this, this whole area is pushed back. So you've got this little, this, this twisting motion going on in the torso. Movement is an important factor in the work. It may not stand, just jump out at you, but there's gonna be a certain subtlety that's created in, in, in the movement. If you move an arm, it's gonna affect something in the back. You need to be aware of what's, of what's going on in the figure. I try to capture the, the essence of the human form and not just the obvious.